tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Good afternoon everyone! So welcome to Season 2 of Making a Difference. So this is a show created to inspire and motivate the youth of today. My name is Erica Misson and I am your host and online friend. So again, um, this is the first ever episode of Season 2. I just want to thank you all so much, um, especially to those who have been watching and supporting the show Ever since um, the first episode of season one, I wouldn't be here without all your love and support. So again, thank you. Thank you all so much. I truly appreciate it. Really, like I'm really, really grateful. And I'm super excited to start my season two. We're going to have more exciting guests. We'll, we're going to... Um, kind of tweak a few of the episodes. So for today, um, the very first episode of season two, I actually invited the co-founder, sorry, founder of Where To Next. Um, she is here today to talk about um, the, uh, enter uh, sorry, the enterprise and the advocacy of Where To Next. So I would like to introduce to you the co-founder of Where To Next. Her name is Ayan De La Torre. Hi, Erica. Hi, Ayan. Nice to see you. <laughs> Even virtually. Virtually. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for um, being a guest on my show. I'm really excited to talk to you today and to talk about where to next. But before we talk about where to next, let's get to know you a little bit. So maybe you could tell us, the viewers um, as well, um, all about yourself. All right. So um, thanks again for having me on the show. I would like to uh, say good afternoon to everyone that's watching, my friends, relatives, <laughs> everyone who supports. Um, my name is Ayan De La Torre. I'm a freelance writer and online community builder. So prior to what I do next, um, I graduated a degree of psychology in UP Diliman. And I started my work career as a corporate management trainee in an FMCG company. So it was very straightforward, climb the ladder, try to get promoted, and then eventually retire and have a have a good life. But it wasn't so linear because I realized that what I really wanted to do was actually tell stories and create more art. So along the, the line, I was a little bit discontented or dissatisfied with my life. And so I went on Facebook and messaged my friend Rachel Halili Aquino, who is my co-founder at Where To Next. And I asked her if she would be willing to create a planner with me. And so that's really how our um, project started as an online shop for travel planners. But really all I wanted to do and what I'm passionate about still is building communities and telling stories. Okay. So um, if I may ask, how long were you in the corporate world? I was there for a year and eight months, but the management program is actually two years. And after that, you're supposed to be promoted as a manager. So it's a fast track phase in the corporate world. But I really felt like while the culture and my bosses were super amazing, it just wasn't the right fit. It wasn't something that I was excited to wake up in the morning. And I know you don't have to wake up excited every single morning, but it just felt like there was a disconnect and I needed more. And I needed to uh, sort of pursue other things that I was curious about. Now let's talk about where to next. So you, know, you realized that you wanted to do all of this. And so you contacted your friend. Um, sorry, what's the name of your um, co-founder? Um, she's Rachel Halili Aquino. And we met in college. So uh, even though I was a psych major, we really love taking photos. And we actually took um, a class called art history in art studies and that's where we learned our love for storytelling we would go to ilocos and other destinations via field trip which was our only way to travel at that time given my permission of parents and budget constraints mm -hmm. and that's when we realized like oh this is something that we enjoy why not create something out of it so we said okay we can make an exhibit we can publish a book together i will write it you'll create the illustrations and the graphics, but we never really actually did it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, like a barbero among friends, like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. But it actually never happened. And life just 
took us on a ride and we graduated from college and we went on separate ways. But because I was just curious at that time, I sent her a Facebook chat and then she replied a few min minutes later and then we created the planner in 10 days. And we just thought, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can always give it as a gift to our friends. Like there's still that joy of creating something from scratch, sort of creating your own art in your own terms because there's no boss, there's no guidelines for it. But what happened was we decided to publish it online to see if other people would resonate with the project. And to our surprise, and this was back in 2014, so hindi pa masyado uso so much your online selling, but a thousand people wanted our planner. So while we only printed 50 copies, we were given the task of printing a thousand because more people really wanted to have a travel planner, a travel guide with them. And while it's an online shop in its conception, and it eventually like, evolved na into a community. Because we realized like if we're really passionate about stories, the best stories are the ones that let other people be part of it. Na hindi lang siya kwento namin, me as Ian and Rich. It has to be something that other people can also take with them. So we would publish and feature stories from other travelers, other local artists, dreamers, and creatives. So it became more of a platform. So the evolution is online shop, then it became a storytelling platform that people can use to share their inner worlds, their adventures, and whatnot. But obviously now we can't really travel, so it's also evolving what we're doing next is at this point. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we will also talk about that later. And I want to know also your thoughts. Yeah, um, yeah so okay. this is me yeah. and my partner, Rachel. And the photo on the right side is was taken in Iceland, where we went last 2017. So those are, I guess, the benefits or gifts that we've had by creating our own platform. That we realized that if we wanted to, to share stories about travel, then we obviously needed to travel. So we would invest and we thought that Iceland was something that you could only do kapag nag-retire ka na or honeymoon. But we found like a promo fair and just decided to uh, go on that trip with our friends. And a lot of the stories and artworks that we created after was inspired by that travel. How long were you in Iceland for? We were there for seven days with seven people around Europe for a whole month. And I that it is a privilege to travel. I've always, you know, our success isn't just purely out of hard work. It's also pure because of luck and gratitude towards our parents. But yeah, we worked hard to create, to uh, be able to uh, afford that trip. And I really feel like it's one of the most meaningful trips I've been to. The first time we saw the nor Northern Lights and it was wow. a gift to be able to do it with friends that I, yeah. I love and admire and also are quite curious about telling stories and taking photographs so yeah that's what find that was the beauty of where to next now we were attracting or we were surrounded by other people that were passionate about the same things and we just decided why not go through it together so in this photo we have some of our um participants in some of our workshops so we went beyond like just having a physical product like our travel planner to actually hosting gatherings to bring people to the outdoors and witness them fall in love with it and both of these are were taken um in yang Il, zambales near the Aita community that mad travel or make a difference travel social and enterprise was running so <laughs> It's just fun to travel, but I think it's always the people that you're with that make your journey much more meaningful. And that's what we try to champion and encourage in Where to Next. <laughs> and with the pandemic, we can't travel at all. Yes. But um, the best memories that I've had is always like just mountains that are nearby uh, Manila, two to three hours away. Some you can ride a car to or some you have to hike for a couple of hours and it's just the bond kakaiba talaga i really feel like if you have the opportunity to travel and to do it with friends you'll get to know each other in a much more deeper level especially pag wala kayong tulog wala kayong ligo and then you have to be much more resourceful when you're in the outdoors so those are the things that i think i can take with me for other aspects of my life and hopefully our audience also feels the same way 
I feel the same way. Those are the best stories to tell. Eh. Connect. So one of the co-founders of Mad Travel is Raf Janisho. And I met him way, way back pa, like after college, because he was also the founder of Circle Hostel. So if you love to surf, you always go to Liu Liwa and then you stay at Circle and that's where we met. It's easy to navigate towards each other if you're just interested in the same things. I, I don't think you have to force that kind of interaction. And so we stayed in touch for the past few years. And one day, I, we were just talking to him as we were just hanging out. And he said like, oh, what, what if you sell your planner? And then for every planner that's sold, we can plant a tree in Yang Yil community because they had a project. So that's where it kind of started. Na parang, oh, I know that would be so cool since there's obviously some form of carbon impact in the planners that we create. Why not offset it a bit and give our audience the opportunity to give back to nature and give back to the communities that protect it through, through that advocacy? And after that, sabi nila, why not host your gatherings or workshops also? And our tours will be the ones to arrange all the logistics, all the stuff. And then you can just run your workshops and gatherings in those spaces. Para hindi ka lang puro coffee shop. Kasi before, coffee shop lang kami, co-working spaces. Since contrary to the idea that we're a travel community, Rachel and I don't actually like planning our travels. We want other people <laughs> to plan it for us. So when we yeah, I mean, he has a travel company, so that's their expertise. And they already have existing relationships with the communities that we want to learn from. So it felt like a perfect partnership. And so, yeah, we've been doing that for a couple of years and it's been really wonderful collaboration. In this case, I was just facilitating, but usually we have like a speaker that goes with us and they also get to interact with the communities in a more personal manner. So they have like one-on-ones where they exchange their life stories. And then the person's story becomes a source of learning for you to apply in your everyday life. Para hindi lamang siya one weekend trip, you take a few nice Instagram photos, and then that's it. We always want that our gatherings feel like a turning point or like something that sparks an interest in you. Na parang, oh, how can I apply this in my everyday life? How can I deepen my connections with the people that surround me at home and at work? And in what ways can I follow my curiosity, even without leaving my day? Um, what projects have you done already with Where To Next? I mean, for Where To Next. Mm-hmm. We can talk about that. Naman. I guess I'll just divide um, the projects in pre-pandemic and during this pandemic. So, okay, pre-pandemic, Where To Next created products and we organized gatherings, all revolving around the idea that that it might inspire others to travel with passion and purpose. So I own namin yung idea na you just travel to a place and then that's it. It should be something that um, becomes a source of learning for you to get to know more yourself, to get to know others, and also to get to know our natural environment. So I'll show a few photos. We have originally, we've always been again an online shop. So we have our travel planners. Okay. So maybe we could show the photos. Okay. Okay, so okay. Yeah, so like one of the main features of our planner is a bucket list. So this includes things that you can do locally, and it's not just places that you could go to. It's people that you could meet. It's um, crafts that you can try, and also how to deepen your relationships with yourself. And mm-hmm. the next, piece. so apart oh. from parang mas tag evolve na siya talaga it's always inspired by the travels that we also go to so the life stories events it became a card game so the one on the left side it's a life story card game where they get props so there's 63 questions and you can play it either with yourself as a journaling practice or with another person or even with a bunch of strangers so sometimes we host gatherings where people just um have a prompt like whom do you want to think but haven't yet and even though it's such a simple phrase <laughs> because it just prompted so many memories and as we try to create a safe space for our participants they do feel um compelled enough to actually share it even with a bunch of strangers because i guess mas madali ka to share with the strangers who don't know anything about your life story and you're just there sharing your feelings and your thoughts and yes, apart from that, we've made journals and it's always packed with stories and not just stories that we tell you to do or just our own stories, but we allow space 
for other people to also share their thoughts and stories. Na parang starting point lamang yung pinagdadaanan namin or what what our view of the world is. And we want you to also share yours. Okay. So, um, it looks so cute. Eh? I, I was gonna ask you, how much do you sell your planners for? Um, the planner this year, the theme is called Coming Home. It wasn't intentional. We didn't know that we would be stuck at home for the rest of the year, but it's only for 7.30 and it's available online. Used to be for all the box stores, but right now there's a pandemic. And a portion of it, goes to the communities that we support, namely the Young Hill community in Zambales and the Tolan community, both indigenous communities of Aitas, and they use the money or proceeds to reforestation and education projects. Na sila na mismo yung champion. Wow, okay. So, seven, oh, everyone, this is only 730 pesos and it comes with a cost as well. Diba? Mm-hmm. You get your own journal and then, you know, you give back. So, a life story, as I mentioned, also really want to go beyond the screen so madalas people just find out about us through our planner or through our instagram but i think the most meaningful connections we can have still and we know this now is face-to-face conversation so we do it outdoors but we also sometimes do it in people's houses like the uh, picture on the right side is the house of a natural photographer. Her name is Hannah Reyes Morales. She's a photojournalist as well. And so we wanted to teach people about how she tells stories through photographs, through words, and to really go through the whole process from research to grant making. And so we did it in her house because we felt like it would provide a sense of intimacy that would be different and would allow people to share more, even though we're just city, even if it's just a few hours in that day. And yeah, we try to kind of, whatever we are, whether that's in a natural setting or just in a coffee shop or just in the urban areas, we really try to create a sense of intimacy that will allow people to share their inner thoughts, to feel heard and listen, and to not feel alone. Because I think at this point, what we really want people to get from Where to Next is that it is a platform for them to feel safe enough to tell their own story. Okay, so when was this? The one in the house? Actually, both. It was just March 1, actually. So it was just before the pandemic and we did it for two days saturday and sunday and we tried to we really tried that most of our gatherings were quite small like 10 to 15 because i feel like yun lang yung amount of people that we can really get to know face to face in a deeper manner and the other one is a life story session in young il zambales and you can see there that the the couple that were participants they were also doing life exchange stories with another couple from the tribe so we really tried to do that na it's not a way thing and it's not really rocket science it's quite simple the formula and the format of our gatherings it's mm-hmm. really more just creating that okay um always with other people or with your friends at least we give you the opportunity to do it with our community and then meet people that you might eventually travel with on your own um personal time this one's interesting at um unplug because you know a lot of people um well pre-covid they've been wanting to unplug as well i've been wanting to try that so how was it how how long was the um how long was the trip well, it was just one weekend, but we did have okay. like, guidelines that parang um, no one was gonna use their phone unless in case of an emergency, since okay. we the organizers naman would have phones, and yeah, it's yeah. really fun. And in this case, yeah, we had a part- recent talent musician. She even went as a participant, so it was fun to see that you know, regardless of your status, or there's always that opportunity of wanting to connect with other like-minded people. So we were talking about. The, the unplugged um, travel because that really caught my attention um, because usually when you travel now yes you get to enjoy kasama yung phone so how was that experience for you um, are you used to using your phone are you the type to really like be on your phone 24 7 unfortunately yes <laughs> but what's <laughs> is that 
my phone, Instagram, social media is part of what I do for a living. Yes. It's hard to kind of create healthy boundaries of when mm-hmm. should I turn it off. But the best time for me to do so or practice that kind of mindfulness is when I'm in, at the, in the outdoors. Because then yeah. there's things that you can um, see, you can touch, you can feel, you can taste. So your senses can be... Uh, you can experience other things that are in the actual world. But I don't think anything that bad or um, about using your phone and documenting the process because we are... We also love taking photos, capturing memories that we can relive after the experience. But it's just a matter of deciding how much dose or how much frequency you're supposed to do it and what is healthy and what is not. Yeah, agree. I wanna I wanna try that one time. If you guys are gonna do that again eventually. Eventually. I'd, eventually, like I'd 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 be interested in joining because that's really something that I've been wanting to do. Talking about do you have any other projects that you've done in the past that we missed out on? Um if they have other things they can always look at our website. It's where to next yeah. on page. There's Para kami minsan ano like there's so many things that were collaborations and projects that we'd love to be part of and I won't have enough time to talk about it but I'd like to talk about what we're doing now okay. so we all know like travel is basically non-existent in 2020 at this point the future of it is uncertain and the world has shifted in so many ways so while our form was inspired by adventures we really tried to go beyond it and one of the projects that we created during quarantine is this initiative called The Artist Promise. So it's made up of 50 plus um, local artists, collaborators, illustrators, photographers. And we curated that um, collection with another nonprofit organization called Fund the Forest. And so mm-hmm. together with these artists, next slide please. Okay. We next. created essentially like an ebook so since we cannot physically publish anything at this point especially at this point when everything was in lockdown we decided why not just share our stories digitally so we would have a prompt like what would tomorrow look like what is your concept of time and then the artist will be paired with the writer and then up to you now how to interpret that theme so the artwork on the left side is actually me and my dad talking about what it's like to be more hopeful in during dark times because my dad is also a storyteller he's probably one that inspires me a lot on a daily basis and during the start of the quarantine i really felt like hopeless as in how do we even sell planners when everyone's plans are in disarray what kind of world are we entering as artists will we still be valued when now we're all stripped into uh, our essentials and we don't really have space or capacity to take on much more and then he reminded me that you know in the darkest times there's always light and when you uh, have a belief or when you have something that you fight for you have to share that with others because other people might be standing beside you and also holding their torch of light and you just didn't know it and so that made me reminded me that actually art will always have a place because art is our way of interpreting what's happening around us and making sure that we get to share our emotions and turn them into concrete actions with other people in our community. So that's just one of the stories from the 50 plus artists, but it felt nice to do something creative, even though I felt emotionally drained during the quarantine, but at the same time to see it actually becoming part of an action where proceeds of 100% of the proceeds of the eBooks goes to helping vulnerable communities and frontliners during the pandemic. Wow, okay, that's really nice. I, I like the... I like the dad, actually. That's really <laughs> nice. I yeah. like it. Um, okay, so get to those artists. Do you, are they your friends or kilala ng friend mo? Some are our friends, like people that have contributed in the past and where do next. Because we always see ourselves as one big community. Hindi naman kami dalawa lang ni Rich. But through the founders of Fund the Forest, the NGO that we work with, they also have a lot of friends because their project is also fueled by storytelling. So, dun 
realize actually that you don't have to do something alone or you don't have to take all the credit and then do all the work as well. It's just a matter of finding overlaps of things you care about and the things that you're good at. So the way that we produced or were able to uh, combine or recruit all those 50 doka artists was really a product of collaboration and finding overlaps between things that we cared about. And if you look at the next slides, we actually had two editions na. So oh. first, parang a few ano lang, and then everyone just wanted to be part of it because maybe that's also their way of helping and their way of coping, using their art to fuel change. And so um, for a few weeks ago, like we've already raised like 280,000 pesos. And every every time we raise like 20,000 or so, we really try to look for um, a cause or advocacy that we can champion. Namely things that we personally that we know that we can trust and also the ones that really try to tap vulnerable communities because i think at this point like any kind of help that you can give if may capacity ka you should do it and maybe in our end it was art that we could give but art could turn into something much more concrete which is to really help provide livelihood and provide financial support to the vulnerable communities nice to know that you're making a difference, especially during the whole pandemic. So I saw, um, can we go to the next slide? Because we, I, I saw that earlier. Okay, so maybe you could talk about these two photos. Mm -hmm. So I think um, one of the guide questions was like, ano yung mga experiences in my life kind of shape, mm -hmm. kind of work that I do. And while I didn't have a lot of like volunteering experiences, I did have immersion with certain indigenous communities, thanks to my dad and my parents as well, because this has been their advocacy for years and years. Um, education that is made by and relevant to indigenous cultures. So in this case, the two photos were taken in separate years in Botolan, um, Zambales. So there are the Lakak community, so they're also an Aita community, similar to Young Il Zambales. And I stayed there for a week. To kind of just get to know about their life, get to know about their story, and also learn more about my parents as a return because some of the projects that they've had over the years, it's the first time that I actually saw it. And okay. what do you like? There's a cut in there. Um, but what do your parents do? So they're also in the NGO space. Mm, so they okay. had an NGO called Education for Life, and that was the one that promoted a lot of leadership training and mm -hmm. models that were based on indigenous culture. But you learn about the la the world, but you also retain and continue to cultivate the traditions that you have as a community. And so it was really nice to just see all the projects that they've done. And what that struck me was, if you've been to Mount Pinatubo, have you been to Mount Pinatubo? No, not yet. No, not yet. Uh, anyway, usually like if it's a day trip and you ride a four by four truck to go to the crate, so it takes around like four hours or so but in this case since it was an immersion and i wanted to uh, know what it's like to get to know their place the way they usually do we actually hiked for eight hours on foot at midnight because that's when the lahar is actually cold and they do that on a weekly basis because they get their produce high up in the mountains and then they sell them in the lowlands or in the cities so that was an eye-opening experience for me because you could go to the same place but experience it in a different manner. And when I asked them if they've been to the Crater Lake, if they've taken photos, at that time, now they've been, but at that time, they said they haven't. Even though it was just a few hours away from their actual home, I realized like, oh, they travel, leisure, leisure travel is not everyone's priority and it is a privilege so if you have the opportunity to travel if you get to be able to meet all these different amazing communities you really try i at least for me i try my best to learn from them i try my best to uh, take into heart the practices and um culture that that i can also apply in my everyday life yeah so, how are you able to cope up with this you know you you're used to um, going out of town, you mentioned a while ago that before you used to hike at least every weekend, no? So how how are you? You know how how did you how were you able to cope with that? I think it's still an ongoing process. There's mm -hmm. no fit size solution, but I think um, he mentioned like how do you cope with anxiety? I think anxiety in healthy doses is a good thing. 
because it reminds you of what is important for you uh, enough that you, uh, it has an emotional reaction. But there's a way down. Uh, there's a technique of like riding the wave of making sure that the anxiety doesn't debilitate you. You're mm-hmm. able to respond to it. You are able to do self-talking, whatever helps ground you. So in my case, what grounds me is doing things with my hand. <laughs> if oh. that makes sense. Because if, okay. if I'm just thinking... And if I'm like overthinking everything, I can spiral for hours and hours and cry myself because I'm an empath, if, if you know the term. So like all the emotions, even current events affect me a lot personally. So, but if I do something and channel my frustrations into something visceral and concrete, then that helps me. So some of the things I do is I bake. I never baked before. A lot of people started baking during quarantine. Like I can make focaccia bread, brownies, okay. cookies, all this. Thing. Um, another is before I never paid attention to my room. Like I never <laughs> thought about the color of my room or everything. Like I still had dolls, like my Harry Potter dolls there. Because mm-hmm. I think okay, I will invest in travel. I don't really care what my shelter or my home looks like because mm-hmm. it's just that a shelter. But now that my home is my place of work, it's my place of friends, it's my place to connect with others, whether that's just digital, then I paid more attention to the spaces because I feel like what you surround yourself with affects also your mental state. I guess it's just also keeping yourself busy. Like what like what you do also. You, you started baking and then you also painted your room and all that. So, um, but you also need to and don't forget to take care of yourself as well mm-hmm. no? and um, doing yeah doing yoga ako, I work out just to release you know all the stress from work um because yeah this you're right that this is gonna be this will be the new normal for quite some time so we have to be able to adjust and with the yeah, whole it, thing yeah sorry go ahead if I may just add like um Although there are healthy distractions, mm-hmm. we also have to confront our fears and our doubts and our anxieties head on sometimes. Because like, why do you feel angry? Why do you feel scared? Sometimes it's labeling the emotion. Because if you're just feeling it and you're not even acknowledging that it's happening, then the distractions just become this short-term distractions that don't really solve anything. Like, my focaccia bread won't solve my anxiety if I don't come to terms of what is triggering it and why that thing is important to me and how can I make sure that I have a more healthy boundary towards it. But it's obviously easier said than done. I say that, but it's Mm -hmm. to practice it on a daily basis. Sometimes I just have really off days where nothing, nothing works. And then I have days where I feel like I'm highly functioning and I can do things. Just it out whether that's on paper or a trusted companion who will listen to you, not judge you syempre iba-iba naman yung ways of coping natin but what helps me is to write it down to say that this is making me anxious what do I do about it and then just to have my my friends or my family members learn that this is something that's happening to me so lahat time when we're going through something so sometimes it's hard if if you're going through something mentally uh, um, challenging and then someone reaches out to you with another challenging um, scenario. So I also try to make sure now, are they ready? Like, can I talk about this with you because I need another perspective? But if hindi mo kaya because you're also going through something, then that's fine. And also for me, like when my my friends go to me for advice or just having someone to listen, I make sure that I'm also mentally prepared and emotionally prepared to get that kind of emotion or feeling. Especially if you care about someone, obviously it's not easy for you to detach yourself from the situation or the problem. But yeah, journaling and talking to someone that you trust helps me. I like the second one, talking to someone. I I abide by that. I always I don't well sometimes you know you tend to keep it to yourself because you you, you feel like you don't wanna bug anyone. Yeah, you wanna be a burden. Exactly. But then you know you have to let it out to your family members, to your siblings. Number one talaga family. Because 
they'll understand you and they're the ones who are going to understand you the most. Then, you know, you can talk to your friends about it. But that's also true. We also have to be mentally prepared. Because, of course, you want to be there for that person. But then you're so distracted. And you don't, you know, you want to give your 100% to that person. But yeah. thank you for sharing. You know, that's really good advice. And I hope, you know, the viewers <laughs> would would take that advice. And I hope... It's important um, to have building blocks. That there are ways that you can pursue something you're interested in. While you're still have a stable form of income. And you're still contributing mm-hmm. to the organization. Because there's a lot you can also learn by being in a corporate or whatever organizational setting. Like discipline, mm-hmm. communication, things that are hard to do kapag mag ka na lang when you don't have any deadlines and yeah. everything is on you. So yeah, preparing yourself, making sure you're emotionally and financially capable of taking the lead. And second is a lot of introspection and learning more about the industry that you want to get into. So if you have friends who are business owners, freelancers, ask them what it's like and ask them not to sugarcoat anything. Like tell mm-hmm. me what it's like to have it on your daily basis. How do you earn? How do you sustain your business? What advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? So all this kind of like preparation will help you, uh, will help reaffirm your decision whether this is something that you really want to do. Because it's easy to be excited about something, to be curious, to see the other side as something much more ideal than your present reality. But it's another thing to actually go through it. And like only been a, more than a year for me since February of 2019, I had quit no other job ko. Okay. And at the end, I learned so much and I had to realize that we wouldn't be earning every single month. And so whenever I have projects, I needed to divide them by 12. And I needed to make sure that these are things that can weather me all throughout. And as an entrepreneur, I decided also to stay with my parents and live with my parents <laughs> as a way to economically make this possible. Because if I have my condo and a lot of the other utility bills, then a lot of it... I couldn't do because the cap- my personal money was also tied to the capital of the business. So, mm-hmm. so, but recently we actually got grants in Where To Next from the NGO called Forest Foundation Philippines. So it's a lot of sustainability um, creative projects and I wouldn't have considered it at all as a, an opportunity for us to earn and learn from. And so there are doors that will open up once it's the right time and once you've done the work to really show up for your dreams and to really make sure that this is something that is important for you and not that you would like to devote majority of your hours to this work. So as mentioned, apart from the Lakas community that we help, we also help the younger community through Mad Travel. So uh, it's in the reforestation projects, getting to know their elders. We talked about like um, developing certain products with them, but obviously now there's a lot of like limitations but i'm so happy to see that they've also pivoted to helping farmers and helping make sure that the produce of these communities could go to the market could go straight to the market so mm-hmm. so yeah and it's been a joy just finding ways to help even in us in our small capacity because i again i i told you like I'm not comfortable with the idea of being labeled as a social enterprise. Mm-hmm. We feel like we collaborate with these causes or advocacies, but they're not, parang, they're already good on their own. And we're just trying to find overlaps where we can still enhance or contribute. But it's more of us learning from them than the other way around. They're, they'd be okay without us. And so it's just more of like finding how can we help without them feeling like we're imposing solutions for our way of seeing the world? Um, you and Rachel, uh, what are your plans for where to next? Any future goals or you, you want to lean towards a certain direction? With this pandemic, I think a lot of our goals or plans are either put on hold or had to be reframed because of the quote-unquote Sobra gas gas na new normal. Yeah. And but the grants thing was something that we never thought about. And so that's something that we're working towards. And one of the projects is actually life stories. So they wanted life stories to become something that other people could run and facilitate. Okay. Whether mm-hmm. that's sustainability uh, um, 
inspired events or creativity projects. So our goal is to create a second deck, a second edition of Life Stories with prompts about yourself, your relationships with other people, your relationship with your culture, and also your relationship with environment to tie it with the advocacy of Forest Foundation. And after that, we're going to recruit 10 people who will teach to facilitate life stories, as in like the format, how to introduce yourself, how to deepen um, conversations with your participants, how to synthesize the lessons. And then they're, it's up to them now. They can run life stories on their own. They can do it for free. They can do a portion of it for advocacy or something that they can also earn from because we want these people to be local creators and facilitators from other parts of the Philippines. Because I feel like mm-hmm. many talented um, creatives out there and maybe we were blessed to have the opportunity to be heard earlier. Mm-hmm. And we, we we were privileged enough to do so, but we want to extend that opportunity to other people. So I want to see life stories to grow beyond where to next. To really see it as a movement that inspires people to have meaningful conversations. So that's one of our projects in the pipeline, and hopefully we're going to launch it like in September. <laughs> September. Okay, I will actually watch out for that. Because that's um that's really interesting, and yes, um it would be nice to also get those um outside Luzon, the man. So if you want to know more about Ian's travel journey, you can check them out on their planner. So um, what's your website? Where to next? Tell about where to next. Where to next dot ph. And dot most of our stories are actually on on our social media. So our mm-hmm. our Instagram. WTN underscore where to next or facebook.com slash where to next ph. Okay, so check them out there again. Ian, thank you so much. Maybe you have any um, last words or maybe you want to give like a shout out. <laughs> uh, shout out to my parents who are watching <laughs> and are unable to do other things because of this streaming. And yeah, shout out to a lot of the local artists, creatives. People that are feeling anxious about this time, it is normal to feel anxious, afraid, scared, even angry. But we always need to feel some sense of hope and to build on that hope through concrete action. So continue telling stories, continue building on your craft, and continue to reach out to one another because that's the only way we're going to survive this. And we're going to survive it together. Thank you for that, Ian. You know, I hope to meet you soon, personally, <laughs> sana, um, after the, the pandemic. So, thank you again for being on thank my you. show. Um, I will talk to you. Yes, I will talk to you soon. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Bye, guys. Okay, so there you go. That is Ian De La Torre from Where To Next. She is the co-founder um very amazing advocacy so this is a different type of advocacy naman this time um you get to share your stories you know be part of a community and you know you also get to travel together again as i mentioned travel stories are the best stories to tell you make the best memories so you know if you have any travel stories that you would want to share um message them message them or you can um, message us as well on making a difference and um it would be nice to to hear from you to hear your stories as well so that ends today's show i hope all of you enjoyed thank you for sticking around again this is the first episode of season two i'm i know i keep mentioning this i'm just very happy and very blessed to um still continue making a difference um because because i do want to i do want to show that we the youth we're we're really um trying to make a difference so um i will see you next week but before that before that <laughs> we have um a couple of shows under v81 radio so after me i have well sorry not me but uh we have another show later at 6 p.m so that's madame venus and then at 9 p.m we have rainbow society and then tomorrow we also have shows under v81 radio from morning 
to nighttime. So we have Startup Nation, we have Talk Shop Asia, that's with Sir Rolly, we have Napalm, that's with Sir Charlie and Sir Fards, and then of course we have Let's Chat with Tita Gracie, with the one and only Tita Gracie, and um. At night, to end your Sunday nights, we have Mustapap. So, V81 Radio, we have show, we are jam packed every weekend with different shows. And just in case you、uh, won't be able to catch any of the shows live, that's okay because we have、um, the shows on our Facebook page. So, that's V81 Radio. And then,、um, if you want to watch my show, we have it on my. Facebook page, so that's making a difference. And we also have on our YouTube channel, so that's the V81 Radio、um, YouTube channel. So you can, if you missed out, don't worry, you can watch through our social media platforms and also on our website. And if you want to watch、um, a previous episode,、uh, it's also still there. So,、um, again, we are jam packed every weekend and then tune in because we also have a couple of shows during the weekdays. So, if you, if you just want to relax and、um, watch a show,、um, check us out. We are. We have a couple actually. All right. So, there, please don't forget to follow.、Uh, V81 Radio on Facebook. V81 Radio is also on Instagram and on Twitter. We also have our own mobile app. And we, and of course, don't forget to follow my show that is making a difference on Facebook. And um yeah, again, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. I was looking at the comments a while ago and I've been, I, I got quite a few congratulations. So, again, thank you all so much for continuing to support Making a Difference and also for get, continuing to support V81 Radio. So,、um, we are actually really growing and I'm super excited for、um, the future plans. So, just stay tuned because we are going to have more shows and I am excited for that. So, There you have it.、Um, I hope you're all well and I hope、um, you're all safe. Again, just a friendly reminder from, an, from a friend.、Um, just in case you really, really, really need to go out of the house, please, please, please wear your masks. Don't forget to practice social distancing and.、Um, Hygiene, guys. Proper hygiene. Practice proper hygiene. All right. So, and oh, yeah. Sorry. Last. <laughs> I saw your comment, Aliyah. If you're still there, I just want to say hi. I saw your comment.、Um, Aliyah Umbrai is.、Uh, there she is. <laughs> hi, hi, Noe. Nice knowing where to next. So, Aliyah Umbrai is、um, a friend of mine, and she is also one of the newest hosts here on V81 Radio. Her show is actually before mine. It's called Beauty in a Box. So, it's more lifestyle y、um, beauty stuff. So, if you're into that,、um, she's the right person to talk to. Check her show out.、Um, she, she, I, I'm so sorry. I think she's like on episode three, I think. So, again, also her shows、um, are on V81 Radio, Facebook, and on YouTube. Okay, I've been talking so much. But again, stay safe, everyone.、Um, I will see you all next week. Bye. The program for the millennials that will showcase young professionals' worth, aspirations, and successes in doing what they believe is right, progressive, and inclusive. Making a difference. Making a difference. Join them as they discover the path to self and societal fulfillment while making a difference. Hosted by empowered and cool millennial Erica Mizon. Together with her cool millennials, they will be making a difference every Saturday, 3 p.m. Philippine time. Only here on V81 Radio. South Manila. Tunog Pinoy, Tatap Pinoy. The future of radio. This is your all hits, all Pinoy internet radio station. This is V81 Radio. Worldwide. Ito ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino. Basta all hits, all Pinoy. Panalo. Merong kwentong iyakan at tawanan. Kahit na saan ka man ito'y mapapakinggan.
stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.